just folks that are really helping the Go Mobile community level up on in many ways. And you're going to walk away with practical, practical things that you can apply in your business, in your relationships, and practical ways on how you can work on stress and anxiety. much, Damien. I'm really stoked to be here with your group. And uh, and I, I didn't know if it was a bring your own drink. So I have water, but I also brought a, a, a beverage. So, you know, I figured we're all, we're all friends, right? There you go. I'm going to ask for, I'm going to ask for some input. Um, on some, pretty much every single little topic that I share, I'm gonna ask you guys what you think about it, how it applies to your life, and um, and I think that you'll get a lot out of that. Excellent, excellent. Well, we're going to, uh, did you give, Derek, did you give Amber the controls? Because I think she brought, did you have some slides? I do have some slides, and it looked like somebody's asking if True Blood comes from Native American. It is not, actually. It's my husband's name, and it's um, uh, English. Like not very, not very super interesting. So, uh, the so one is interesting though. The name, yeah. is right? I know. Everybody says my boys' band should be called like True Blood, right? Because they have such a badass last name. Right. But um, they started so young that we didn't want, like, we didn't want a lot of personal information out there about them when they were so little. So we were like, let's just let's just make it vague for right now. And now they don't want to change it. So now, how old are they now? Because we just saw the two videos. Yeah, they're that's those are like pretty recent. So okay. they are, uh, oh my gosh, nine, eleven, uh, almost thirteen, and fourteen. Wow. Yeah. I mean, everybody here that's been a parent or is a parent, you know what that's all about. So we have seven children, Amber, my wife and I, Nikki. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, seven, seven children and six grandchildren. And five boys, two girls, and, and then we have the six grandchildren now. So we're, we're, we get it. We get it. It's a lot of fun. It and is communication lot. is absolutely key. Yeah. Because if you don't have that down, <laughs> right? It's a hot mess. It is a hot mess. Okay, cool. Should I, should I share? We can go yeah, from here. Sure. I'm so excited everybody's here. All right. So here we go. Damien, give me a thumbs up. You can see my screen. Gotcha. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about, Damien mentioned practical strategies and I am all about, you know, it, it doesn't make any difference in the world if you have a million aha moments and you get all inspired and revved up. If it's not practical, if it's not easily implementable into your life, then I don't wanna waste your time, frankly. Like I don't, I mean, yes, it's like entertaining maybe, but I wanna give you tools that you can actually implement and use like tonight tomorrow morning and then next week be like holy mackerel that little tweak that extra five minutes or changing out this and doing that instead made such a big difference in my life so that's what i want from you so it's your job here just to like be here give yourself this time give yourself this gift to be present participate um if you feel so called and impelled to um and i hope you do and also you know, it's your job that I always say, you know yourself best, right? So, you know, I like to provide a kind of like a, a smorgasbord, a buffet of tactics. And then it's your job to say, oh yeah, 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 that one, that's gonna work for me. Or I used to do that and I don't do that anymore. Well, okay, yeah, I'm gonna implement that again. So it's your job to tune in and um, jot down what your takeaways from this are gonna be. Does that sound good? Okay. All right, we are gonna go. So this is, this is I talk about benefits to teams as well. My larger in-depth program goes into teams, how to use these tactics to increase your productivity, improve your focus, maximize efficiency, obviously better manage your stress. That's like the overarching theme of all of these strategies will reduce your stress and anxiety. Um, improve problem solving and also improve your conflict resolution, right? And the amount of miscommunications that are going on in your life. 
All right, does that sound good? Okay, this is me, those are my kiddos. My husband's a photographer, so this is like the before picture where everybody's like in nice lighting, you know? And then I have other pictures where it's just mayhem and craziness and mess and grime and noise. Um, all right, so first I wanna talk a little bit about morning routine. You're in trouble, your boys are all handsome and you're absolutely in trouble come high school years. <laughs> are you getting prepared? You don't think I don't lose sleep about that already? Like, holy mackerel. I'm like, we have to build already all the neighborhood girls come every day and play in our backyard. Yep. <sighs> yeah, don't stress me out. I'm gonna need my, my, my stress reduction techniques just to deal with that thought. So a lot of you, I'm sure, already either have a morning routine or you have had a period of life, your life where you really depended on a morning routine. Um, so this is for you if if you have one that you love, maybe there's a component that you wanna add or switch out because often our brains work really well when we kind of challenge ourselves by switching things up occasionally, not doing the same exact thing every day, every day, every day. So I challenge you, if you do have a morning routine, maybe switch it out with one of these um, smash components. And if you don't have a morning routine, then I highly encourage you, I'm, I'm gonna describe the technique in a moment, but I highly encourage you to implement, try this smash technique because it's super simple. You can remember it with the acronym and you can do it in way less than five minutes every morning. So there's almost no excuse, except for if you forget and you just jump out of bed with your phone and, you, and then you gotta like get back into bed and do it. <laughs> okay, so, Here's what it is. I want you to smash your mornings. And when, obviously, the benefit of a morning routine, if you need a reminder, is instead of beginning your day in a reactive mode, right? You check your phone, you're looking at your email, oh my gosh, this happened, or I forgot about this, there's already an emergency. You're already reacting, right? You're putting out fires left and right. You are not driving your day. You are not deciding anything from the beginning. You're not purposefully walking into your day with clear priorities and presence of mind. Instead, you're being pulled around by everybody else's needs and demands, which honestly not only doesn't serve you, but it doesn't really serve them in the long run either. And that could be your family, it could be your partner, it could be your team, it could be your community. You're gonna serve all of them better and more when you take a few minutes in the morning and to get centered and get quiet so that you can then begin your day from a point of purpose, right? So SNASH is one way that you can do it. And I like acronyms, so I always try to fold everything into an acronym that I can. Um, so this looks like, it's very simple. It's gonna start with a smile. And this is, I love neuro hacks. Um, and I love biohacking. And so, because often, you know, we have so much emotions going on, especially in the last couple of years with a lot of increased stress and anxiety and frustration. Um, and it's difficult to intellectually talk ourselves out of that, talk ourselves down. Okay, I'm gonna journal, I'm gonna meditate. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna think about this. Why is this bothering me? That's all useful and good and wonderful. And I love those strategies, but you don't always have the time or the emotional energy for that, right? So you can use biohacks like smiling, which tells your brain, oh, she's happy, he's happy. Re releases the neurochemicals that align with that emotion, and then you feel that emotion. And if you're like me, you might have found that in the past couple years, you are grinding your teeth at night, or you're, I will wake up and my hands will be like in fists, <laughs> like I'm gonna, but like I'm gonna fight something. Um, or even my lips will do this weird like, grandma pursing thing in the middle of the night I'm like what is going on with my body so as soon as i hit a conscious level in the morning i smile and it could be it doesn't have to be like a giant duchenne they call it a duchenne smile it doesn't have to be a genuine smile you don't have to feel it just moving your mouth in those using those muscles in your mouth for a smile sends a message directly to your brain hey he's smiling she's smiling we're all happy now um, so that's the first step. Obviously, it's very quick. <laughs> then you're going to want to take some slow, deep breaths. You're going to want to oxygenate your brain and your body from the beginning of the day, right? And I like to add, so you can do these first three all at the same time. Deep breath, smile. 
And you're gonna add a very simple mantra. So if you already have an affirmation that you love, it could be something as simple as this is gonna be a beautiful day, I've got this, I am enough, you know, or it could be a longer, more focused mantra. So something positive that sets a clear intention for your day. Um, and I have, you know, lots and lots of content specifically on mantras and, and affirmations and what what makes them more fun or more powerful. And um, but I want to want to try to keep to I'm going to try to keep myself focused here. Um, so and then you're going to want to stretch. You're going to want to move your body around. And I did this. Um, so Damien, maybe you'll help me here. I did this um, chat this morning and they said, you know, we, we want to get up and stretch. So for anybody who's game to turn on their camera and get up and just, you know, move your body. A lot of twisting is good in the morning. Um, and, uh, and stretching, like just any way that it feels good to move your body. Like I love to dance, but I don't always love to dance first thing in the morning. So I'll do some cat cow or do some, um, like sun salutations or something like that, but do some stretching in the morning, getting that blood flowing to your body it can be really powerful um, for the whole rest of your day. And then the fifth part of smashing your mornings is H2O, is water. And if you don't already have drinking, a, you know, a substantial amount of water in your day as a practice, um, then it's even more powerful for you to sleep with a jug of water next to your bed. So that's one of the first things you do. It becomes a habit because you're linking it to right as soon as you get up. Okay, you can smile, say your mantra. I have three to five slow, deep breaths, stretch, chug that water. And then man, just those few minutes at the beginning of your day allows you then to begin from a more purposeful standpoint, a more clarity and you will find then that when you start your day on um, purpose, everybody else will benefit. Uh, your business will benefit, your relationships will benefit, and you're giving yourself a gift, but it's really for everybody else as well, right? So let's share. Does anybody, um, I would love either out loud or in the chat, if it's preferable, share with me, like, if you do have a morning routine, what's something that you, that's like, uh, like a deal breaker. Like if you don't do this in the morning, ugh, do you pay for it later? So what's your in the morning? Like, oh, I've got to do this every morning. And, and it so helps me. Let's see what we have here. Anybody's welcome to also come off of uh, mute. Let me just unmute. What about you, Damien? Mine is the sauna. 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes maximum, dry, hot sauna. I'm knocking out all kinds of stuff from mantra, stretching, sweating, meditating, thinking, focusing, clarity. Like I'm getting it all in that 20 minutes. And then I go jump in a cold dip. And I sit in that cold ice dip for about a minute and a half to two minutes if I'm feeling really frisky. <laughs> And then I go and lay down on a lay down, on a lay down, you know, I lay down and cover myself from head to toe. Uh -huh. So my body just come down to natural temperature again. Uh -huh. And then I go real deep into meditation. And I might end with some Wim Hof breathing, four rounds with two and a half minute breath holds. Mm -hmm. When I'm done with all that, and notice I didn't put workout in here because if I don't have enough time for a workout, what I just mentioned is good enough. Yeah, that's incredible. I love that. Okay, we oh, have. Hey, Dono, oh, I know Dono does Kung Fu sessions. He's, how you doing Dono? Good to see you on here. We've got some people answering in here. Um, Jay Miller has a similar, though not as structured, easy to incorporate. Anybody Beautiful. else want to share? Yeah, What's I you think, uh, you know, from one of the other, uh, the previous uh, presenters that you had, Damien, indicated, you know, to have a purpose. That really has helped me because and even even the, even on days when all of a sudden the phone is ringing, a client's calling me at seven o'clock in the morning, saying this is the only time I have to speak, and I'm like, whoa, I'm just literally just getting up. I don't know where things are, and and uh, I have to say, you know what? Let me be, now. I ask him, let me, give me about five to ten minutes. Let me call you right back, and then it's kind of like okay, kind of like okay, what? Where is everything else? Uh, start getting you know prepared and so now knowing that the night before i have 
where I have my notes, where I have my client, you know, work, so that if if I do get that call, I'm not just everywhere. And because now you're right, you are more productive. Because I'm trying to, you know, think like God, you know, what, where is everything that I need to have? And so I'm starting that. So thank you for offering this, uh, these, uh, the smash. Because now I'm going to post it on a, on a note and. I'm just going to go there, you know, I'm going I forward. It. Super simple. And, and that's why I like to make it something easy to implement. And, and once you get that in your habit, you know, and then you see the benefits, then, you know, then the meditation, you know, then you can add a meditation and then, you know, that just amplifies from there. I love it. Okay. Let me move on here. Okay. So, and this one, Damien, I don't think we talked about, I was like, you know what I really want to talk about is super senses. So I'm, I'm throwing a curveball early on here. So this you will find not only reduces your emotional reactivity, but it also reduces the distraction in our lives because we have a lot of that, right? And if you are an entrepreneur, you're running your own business, you can't always ignore, you know, every, you can't ignore, you can't just put your phone on airplane mode until noon. And, you know, there, there are certain limitations to what you can do and still have your business surviving. So what do you do then to reduce your overwhelm and anxiety when you need to really take care of your central nervous system, right? And because it's not working for you. And if you don't take those moments to figure out how to re refuel yourself emotionally and how to reset your nervous system, holy moly, right? Then it's going to come out. It's either going to attack your relationship because your mood is going to go to shit or it's going to attack your um, your health, right? Your immune system or your heart or cardiovascular system, or it's going to mess with your metabolism. All of a sudden you're starting to lose weight in your middle. You're going to start, uh, you know, hitting the, uh, the, the beer earlier and earlier in the day. You know, it's going to show up in different ways of your life. So what can we do to preempt that and help ourselves now? So I love thinking about super senses. And what I mean by that is we all have one of our five senses that is more acute than the other, that is slightly more on, um, on alert, right? So you might be a visual person, you might be an auditory person, you might be a tactile person. Um, so I want you to put in the chat, what are you, what's your predominant way that you access the world? And then I'm gonna show you how you can use that information both to reduce stress and anxiety and to amp up the good, positive feelings in your life when you need to tap into that. So you can either raise your hand and tell us, or it might be easier to put it in the chat. Okay, so we've got a visual person. How do you even figure that out? Whether you're okay. you know, visual or auditory or kinesthetic or whatever. That's a great question. So where do you find that you're maybe a little bit more sensitive or irritable than the people around you? Are you disturbed by sense, you know, like, Oh my gosh, that, does everybody smell that? Oh God, it smells terrible, I can't handle that. You might be a super smeller, you know? Are you like, oh my God, that's too loud. Why are you guys so loud in here? Can you turn that down? If you're the one always in the room asking people to turn things down, you know? Uh -huh. That you're gonna be an auditory person. I mean, I have these right next to me. I'm definitely auditory. Um, if you're a person who, um, who, gets very sensitive about fabrics. Like, oh, I can't, there's a tag on the shirt. Is, can somebody rip this out? You know, okay, you might be a tactile person. You're noticing things. You're noticing the materials on that are touching your skin and you either really, really love them if they're good or they really, really bug you if they're bad. Like, oh, I can't wear that kind of material. I can't wear polyester. It just like ugh, makes me itchy. And you're a tactile person. Does that help? Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm definitely, you know, the auditory person. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Okay. So how are you going to use this to reduce your stress and anxiety? That's the first one. Um, and this is by reducing overstimulation. So for instance, if you're a visual person, maybe you have a house that, um, you know, you, you moved a while ago, but you still have piles of stuff that you haven't put away, or you're reorganizing this room. So you've got got everything out of the drawers right now and you've got it all put out on top because you're reorganizing it. Or maybe you just have a bunch of beautiful different colored display pillows or pictures on the wall. When you are in a heightened state of emotional um, reactivity, when you're just feeling overwhelmed or feeling stressed or even feeling just emotionally down, like, you know, mildly depressed, 
it will behoove you then to look at your visual field and say, how can I reduce the amount of visual stimuli in my world? And that might mean putting the stuff back in the drawers. It might be hiding things in the closets. It might be, literally I did this this morning. I was meditating in my bathroom this morning. My husband was still sleeping and I didn't want to go out to the rest of the house yet. But there was literally like a mountain of laundry, like just like a giant mountain of laundry in the corner of my bathroom. And it was like making my heart palpitate just looking at it. And so I just grabbed some big gray towels that were also on the floor and just covered and just covered it up, just covered it up. So I didn't have to look at it. And then it immediately reduced my, my the panic, you know? So it, I'm not saying you have to stop everything and clean up and organize, but you can just take it out of your visual field for a momentary time. And I will take a blanket and cover stuff up because there's 12 loads of laundry in my house, like constantly on rotation. Like, if I stopped to pick up a sock and put it away, I wouldn't make it from my bedroom to my kitchen in in a day's time. Like, I would just be constantly moving. So, so reducing the stimuli. Now this looks like, you know, if you're an auditory person, this is maybe having some earplugs, having some of these near you. I have something called Flare Audio Calmers. You can get them on Amazon um, for like $20 or something. And they reduce kind of the dirty frequencies um, coming in so they're not earplugs but they and I kind of thought oh this kind of sounds like could be total baloney but 20 bucks I'm willing to try it and um and I did and I noticed on days that I was wearing it my my tolerance and patience for noise was higher I could tolerate more and I was not as reactive and, and grouchy about about the noise in my house so find ways that you can reduce the amount of stimulation that's coming in that's bothersome and even if it's pretty if it's too much it's going to heighten because that's the sense that you're already uh, attuned to does that make sense yeah high, highly sensitive to light sound smells clutter fabrics don't even think of me <laughs> all right so tara says yes right so so yeah you have to be protective of that and knowing that about yourself and being able to communicate that, which we'll talk about later, is really important, right? So that you can say and take responsibility. You're not saying everybody else has to maybe walk on eggshells around you, but they need to know that if you haven't had your morning coffee, we need everybody to be a little quieter. And you might need to have some things in your life that reduce the amount of stimuli that are surrounding you. So aside from using this as, go ahead. This is really practical because I didn't think to think what is my super sense and out of all of them, what's the one you're most, you know, be triggered with overstimulation by? We'd have never thought of this, you know, before hearing it. And it is practical because like for audio, of course, if you get some complete for you having guitars around you and drum sets, I mean, you absolutely, I mean, and then of course with, give me one for my wife. Hers is smells. Yeah. You, okay. So smells. Go to a place. And, and, and at walking into the restaurant, it can smell the kitchen and go, okay, we gotta leave here. <laughs> yeah, and smells obviously, especially if you're out and about, are gonna be harder to control because you can't, you know, I mean, there's gonna be certain restaurants that she doesn't even wanna go to, which is unfortunate. So it's like, do we eat outside? But then does the smell of the cars bother her? So that can be really tricky. Um, what I would, what was that? Oh, what I would recommend then is um, is the next thing I was going to go into, which is how can you also use that same super sense to increase the amount of calm and joy in your life. So what she might need is some you know essential oils that all are connected to different sensory experiences for her. So maybe when she smells citrus, she feels kind of energized, but in a good way, not you know amplified, but you know you know excited, happy. You know maybe some lavender is oh. it's a calming one for her so what sense bring her that and i know people who literally keep them in their work desk and they will they'll smell them throughout the day you know every 20 minutes they use it um to impact their their mood both for calming and for um you know agitating but in a good way you know adding to your excitement or joy or energizing yourself and same thing for so for instance, if you're an auditory person, how do you use that for your benefit? So that might look like a playlist or several playlists I would recommend 
for whatever kind of mood you're trying to draw into your life at that moment. So if you're trying to have whew, just bring down your energy and have some calm moments, maybe you have a playlist for that. If you want to bring up your energy and bring up that kind of spirited playfulness, um, then you have a playlist for that. And I always recommend, here's like a, a secondary um, strategy for this, is that if you're gonna do some music, I highly recommend that you use music that you loved or that spoke to you between the ages of 14 and 24. And during those ages, your brain is the most neuroplastic it's gonna be, it's the most flexible. So things that you get exposed to during those ages are so much more powerful. They're just like embedded down there in your brain, right? And so it, you get such a bigger bang for your buck when you play, and we all know this like inherently, right? When you watch a movie that you just loved when you were 14, and then you show it to somebody who didn't see it until they were 28, and they're like, I guess, like it's a, it's a good movie, yeah, it's fine, right? But they're like, they don't understand why you just like love this movie and think it's amazing, right? It's because you saw it during those years or you heard that music during those years and it embeds in your in your physiology at a whole different level. So now- It's you know, a never ending story for me, for anybody that knows that movie. I was young when I first saw that and it's one that I tried to introduce to my kids or other people and they just didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we showed our kids never ending story just a few months ago and they were like at first they were like what is happening these like animatronic like crazy you know crazy visual effects and then they they got into it once i was like hey don't give an attitude about it like to you know watch it take you know give it a moment and and then they loved it by the end but it was a little bit of a push <laughs> Home Alone 2, yeah, never ending story. I love That's it. That's my son Chase in there. Hey, Chase, good to see you on. <laughs> oh, That's he loved my it. Son. He's, my son's 32, though. 31, 32. I'll get it right, Chase. <laughs> we never, I mean, did we remember? Okay, 32. Thank you, Chase. Um, so, so same thing. If you're a visual person, for instance, and you know, you see out of the corner of your eye, oh, wow, it's just like it's really pretty sunset. And then you just go back to your emails. No, 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 no. You're a visual person. You have an opportunity there. Take a moment, go outside, take it in. We had this gorgeous double rainbow here in San Diego earlier in the week. And we called everybody like, hey, everybody, stop what you're doing. Come to the back of the house. Look at this amazing. And we just sat there and watched as the rainbow changed and grew brighter and darker and then moved and then had a double and then that went away. And, you know, so people who are visual, you want to take those opportunities to um, expose yourself visually to beautiful things and to the outside world, you know, to nature, to anything not man-made. But even if it's, you know, seeing beautiful pictures or beautiful artwork or beautiful nature photography, even that will be um, refueling for you emotionally. Does that make sense? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, yeah, this is super sense. So remember your super sense and just look around, like look around your workspace. You know, does it jive with what is most likely to benefit you given now that you know what your super sense is? Oh, and let me give a plus for like, if, if you're a tactile person. So, you know, maybe you have a super soft, you know, blanket or sweater or robe that you always have near you, um, or you have your cat that you can pet or something like that, you know, so you have tactile sensations that really soothe you. Um, that could be very beneficial, you know, make sure that you're warm. How's your temperature? You know, you might be more sensitive to um, temperature fluctuations, you know, and this is a good thing to communicate. I mean, this is kind of the underlying thing was if, to the people you live with, right? Because chances are, unless they have the same super sense as you which then you really don't need to communicate because you're both it's obvious that restaurant smells we're not going to that restaurant you know you don't even have to have the conversation but often you don't have the same super sense as the people living with you so explaining that and saying hey you know how like it really bothers you when i play my music loud it's kind of how i feel when you leave your socks all over the floor in the bathroom like it drives me nuts in the same way that it that the sound drives you nuts how can we both then be a little bit more respectful and and show some compassion for one another now that we understand, oh, it bugs you like that? Oh, now I get it. That's you know, so you, so you can communicate your super sense and then maybe even ask your partner, what do you think your super sense is? 
and then maybe then you can um, minimize the chances for future conflict that might come from something that really is related to your super sense. And they just think you're being so ridiculous. No, so that doesn't bother anybody else. <laughs> okay, let's go here. All right, so I wanted to talk about motivational styles. And this is because often one of the things that can cause a lot of stress and anxiety in our lives is when we set expectations for ourselves that we then don't meet and then we beat ourselves up or we self judge, right? And that's not helping anybody. Um, Cause it, as far as I know, beating yourself up doesn't really make you work harder, longer, stronger, or, or better, more productively or more efficiently in the future. So what is, what's really powerful about understanding your motivational style, and I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna break it down to four and then I'm gonna ask you to share which is your four. So listen, listen for what you think. Um, when you, can identify your motivational style and then you actually like utilize it when you need it. It's not only more fun to actually get it done, um, but you're more likely to get it done. You're more likely to get it done well. Um, you're less likely to feel that stress and anxiety and overwhelm along the way. So trying to use something that works for somebody else is can backfire in so many ways. So for instance, when you're like, man, Damien gets up at 530 and then like, meditates in his sauna and then he goes in the cold dunk and then he also you know then he does Wim Hof like and then he meditates like holy man I want to do that okay I'm gonna do that I'm gonna wake up at five and then you do it one time and then you feel like such a loser because you can't do Damien's morning routine what's wrong with me why can't I do it he obviously is doing well he's obviously happy I, I actually have I bought one of these things I bought a tub like I have it here and I'm not even effing using it. Like, you know, and then we beat ourselves up for it and then we're not doing it anyway. So to, in order to avoid that, understanding your own motivational style and being real honest with yourself is, is a way around that, okay? So, um, so here are some of them. You might be somebody who, um, who's anybody who identifies as a procrastinator, who's ever labeled themselves as a procrastinator? Okay, so, I, I don't like this word because let's let's completely switch this around. Um, because you're somebody, chances are, that really gets an adrenaline rush, a happy adrenaline rush, an exciting, exciting adrenaline rush. That's tricky to say. An exciting adrenaline rush um, when you are up against a crunch, when you have and you're the type of person who when somebody comes into you and says oh my gosh i have this huge thing set up for tomorrow and the caterer just backed out i don't know what i'm gonna do and this other thing happened like i have an emergency i need your help and you're just like yes i will come to the rescue like i can do it like you know and you get excited because you're a problem solver and you want that time pressure because you want to like save the day and that's where you shine right that's where you really show up and shine so inevitably, say you have a big presentation you have to create by the end of March. Oh my God, the idea of like doing a little bit now and then a little bit next week and then a little bit the week after that is like, oh my gosh, kill me now, so boring, right? But if somebody's like, I need a presentation and I need it Saturday, by Saturday at 10 a.m., you're like on it, on it. And so what happens then is you create that situation for yourself. You wait until February 27th to do the presentation. But meanwhile, many of you, many of people in this category end up spending all of February beating themselves up for not doing it earlier because everybody else has theirs done. So if you know this about yourself, you can either forgive yourself and know that you're gonna wait till the last dang minute and you know that you're gonna do a better job that way anyway, or you can set false deadlines. But you gotta do it in a way that feels real enough that you get excited about it. You know what I'm saying? So maybe for that presentation in March, you say, um, you sign up, you know, you sign up for a TEDx talk or you invite somebody really like out of your league in your area of work to watch the presentation. So all of a sudden stakes are much higher for that. You know, you make it into a, uh, a bigger deal or you bring the timeline um, you, you have to find a way to get that adrenaline going. Does that make sense? So you want to make the deadline sooner, um, tell somebody else, commit to them, hey, I'm going to have this presentation done sooner. So you know that you're somebody who works well 
if the deadline is, they say that the deadline has to be, um, in fact, I, I, there's a term for this and it just went out of my head, it'll, it'll circle back, but that you want the deadline to be slightly shorter than how long you actually think it'll take you. So you don't want to give yourself more time because that works backwards for your brain, right? That's not motivating for you. So that's one of them. It's deadline oriented. Do you like to, to work under a crunch? Okay. Another person might be a motivational style where they love um, micro goals, right? They love just doing a little bit every day and checking it off. I write it on my list. I check it off. I feel that sense of accomplishment because I broke it up into chunks and I'm checking off my stuff into a hundred little pieces every day and I like it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause they like, they like feeling those little pieces of achievement along the way. And that's how they get motivated to complete say the presentation by the end of March. Okay. So that's a, somebody who could set up micro goals for themselves. Um, and, and that would be a way to motivate themselves. Another person, might be motivated more by um by big audacious goals so this means like you know instead of saying oh i want to exercise more i want to be healthier um okay well maybe i'm going to sign up for a sprint triathlon then so that i have something to work towards so they need a big audacious goal to work towards otherwise it's just not motivating right so if there's an area where you want to get yourself motivated, what is the big audacious goal you can create for yourself in that area of your life, whether it's financial. So like, say you wanna get yourself back on track financial, or you wanna to get to the next level of your business um, in revenue or in profits. So you might be this type of person that instead of saying, okay, I'm gonna, I want to make 10% more a year, or I want to cut, you know, whatever it is financially, instead of that, if you're a big audacious goal person, you want to create a big audacious financial goal. Okay, I want a, I want a million dollar quarter. I want to do my first million dollar quarter. This is it, you know, and then that's it. That's the mantra in your head, million dollar quarter, million dollar quarter, I got it. So, um, so maybe that's your motivational style. The fourth one is when you're more about personal connections and relationships. So having an accountability partner. So say you have this huge presentation due at the end of March, you find somebody that you know and love and you say, do you have anything that you wanna get done by the end of March? And can we hook up maybe a quick call once a week or every other week? where I tell you where I'm at, you tell me where you're at, I give you support, you give me support, I feel like I'm in on it with somebody else, I'm not doing this alone in an isolated silo. I have a partner in this because for you, it's about the communication, right? It's about the connection with other humans, right? It's about sharing the experience. And so if you know that you're a person like that, then set yourself up with an accountability partner that they don't even have they don't have to be doing the same thing they don't even have to be in the same work world that you are they just have to have something that they are also working toward and hopefully they are also um this same motivational style so that it encourages and motivates them just as much as it encourages and motivates you does that make sense so i would love if everybody could share what they think their motivational style is where in your life in your past have you tried one of those four things and it really worked well for you? And often we're more than one, I get it. But what do you think you're the most? I have to say that for me, it was procrastination. Uh, but once you get, it's it's the hardest to get started on something. And I didn't realize and I heard uh, like a hack from somebody else, um, you know, that I've been practicing and it's really helped. Whereas um, I just count, five, four, three, two, one, and it gets me started. I mean, cause my brain, it takes my brain from like, oh, do you have everything that you need? And so now I do a little countdown and whatever. And so now applying it to everything that I feel like, oh, I don't feel like I should, I know I should do it, but don't want to do it. And kind of like it, it could, it gives me a little bit of that energy, kind of like what you were talking about. Uh, it's not that I didn't have it. I just, I didn't have it. I had it physically but not mentally, and that yeah. has been helpful. So it goes along to what you just said. I love that, you, so you give yourself a countdown, like if you're at a starting line. Okay, go. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, with a house full of boys, it's very similar um, too. Like often when they're really little, they will say like, okay, time me. 
you know? They want it, it's no fun unless it's a race, you know? Like, okay, you want me to pick up, my, clean up my room? Okay, time me, you know? And then they run and do it as quickly as possible. Um, so let's see, I get motivated by making progress a little every day, yeah. So checking it off your list, right? Feels really good, I love that. So you can break your goals down into, into chunks and that's gonna be most useful you for you. Mine's closest to the mini milestones. Yeah, the micro goals, beautiful. I'll bet you there are more accountability partner people in here too, I wonder. Damien, what are you, big audacious goal? So for me, I, I binge project work. So I'll just, I, I, like something's due. I, uh, I gotta have it done on March 15th. I might hit it at March 12th and 13th for a three, four hour blitz because I'm not doing anything else during that. I'm focused on that one thing. And to do that so far in advance or early, like other people's personalities are, that doesn't compliment me. It's so far off that I'm not gonna give it the hardcore focus. When that shit is next week, I'm right. on it. When I can drill myself into that box of get it done before I do anything else. So that's my motivation style. Second motivation style, I know this is gonna sound like a hand, but um, like when I do things that are noticeably make my wife extremely happy. Like I'm motivated by that reaction. And so that's a really good motivation for a partner to have, I would think, but that's that's one of my biggest motivations. So I, I binge project work and uh, again, others in my life, happiness, I guess is, a, is another big motivator, so. That's a common one and I talk about that a lot in my relationship and communication um, topics because uh, a lot of women don't understand how powerful it is to tell their partner um that they're happy that made me really happy oh my gosh i'm so happy yeah thank you that made me happy that made me feel happy and when you get that I think so it's simple you want more of it you know what i mean like when you receive that on the other side of it it's like i want i want i want more of that right and i think that works for everybody in all relationships it seems like a for sure for sure and saying things like wow you were right Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> that's a big oh, one. Are you kidding? That's a winner. You want brownie points times 10? You just say, you know what? You're right. Absolutely right. Like, but, but genuinely, because I try to pull that yeah. off. I try to pull that off. And when it looks like I'm saying, yeah, you're right, just because I wanted her to shut up, that's what she'll say. Oh, yeah, you're just saying that because you want me to shut up. And I'm like, yeah. no, no, you're really right. No, you have to, it has to be genuine. It has to come from a good place for sure. All right, let's go. I can relate to that. <laughs> Okay, so um, here's the, and this is from um, a session, what is it? I think this is from the first or second session of my more in-depth program for teams, but I like to talk about preventative strategies like the morning routine and meditations and visualization, visualizations and stuff like that for reducing anxiety. But I also love to talk about um, in the moment hacks, right? Um, because often, like I mentioned earlier, you don't have time to intellectually calm yourself right you don't have time to go write in a journal or meditate for a half an hour in the sauna you know if you do fabulous but if you don't if you're about to hop on a call right or you're about to hop on a plane and you don't have the time or the capacity to do something more in depth um what are some in the moment strategies that you can use so i'm going to give you two here but um cross lateral movements um are one of my favorites so if you if everybody would join me here for a moment so you Take your two hands, you're gonna put one hand in a fist and the other hand flat and you're gonna hit your bottom hand six times as quickly as possible and then reverse it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then breathe and breathe. And what you wanna do is you wanna make sure your top hand is in a fist and you're on both sides. So when you alternate, it's always your top hand that's moving and your top hand that's in a fist. So take some concentration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your bottom hand is flat. And what this does is it facilitates communication between your right and left hemispheres, right? So your brain, instead of getting stuck over here in this spiral, oh my God, I can't believe, I can't believe that happened. I can't believe he said that. I can't believe this deal broke, you know, like broke apart. I can't believe this person backed out on it. I can't believe, oh my gosh. And it's just sitting there in this like bright red, orange, if your brain was in, a, in an MRI machine, right? So instead, doing these movements while breathing, make sure you're not holding your breath, right? Or like this, <sighs> doing them as quickly as possible. It facilitates that hemisphere communication between your two hemispheres and it breaks 
that spiral, that thought spiral, the negative thought spiral. And what you'll find after like less than 30 seconds of doing this is you can still remember what happened. It's not like, um, it's not like a, um, whatchamacallit, a, uh, you know, um, a hypnosis or something. It really works um, and you remember, but all of a sudden it, you're less reactive to it, right? Your central nervous system has calmed, you have some perspective and some space on the situation and your body has had time to kind of uh, refocus, right? Your brain has had time to calm itself. So a cross lateral movement is a great thing to do in the moment when you just need a minute. You can even do it like in the midst of an argument where you're just like so mad, you're so upset with somebody or you're on the phone, you're just like, oh, hold on a second. You just go in there, do that, do your deep breathing and you'll find, okay, now I have some clarity. I can think straight again. Let's have, let's continue this discussion. Uh, one of the side side ones to that, and I think Damien, we talked about this maybe in the, in the first uh, chat we had was, I always keep gum near me. Um, and gum is another really, really easy brain hack because when you're chewing gum, your Neanderthal brain thinks that you're eating. And if you're eating, it means you're not being chased by a saber toothed tiger. So it can relax. You doesn't have to prepare your body and your brain for fight or flight or freeze, right? So instead, you can think more clearly. Your heart rate goes down. The adrenaline and cortisol levels can kind of dissipate and you can think more clearly again, right? You can use all of you, you know, you can use your immune system again, your metabolism again, your, um, your, um, your blood, you know, instead of going out to your muscles and your limbs can go back to its internal organs and taking care of your system. So sometimes something as simple as chewing gum can help indicate to your body that you are safe. You're safe. So as long as you're not chewing it like like all angry, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like if you're angrily attacking the gum, then that might not be for you. But um, but chewing gum is an also is also another option. <laughs> Combination. All right. So let's see. Somebody hey, said, for, um, yeah, question. Um, Derek popped in the chat earlier. I think you might have missed it. Yes. Um, when, when talking about like procrastinators specifically, um, he said that um, He's asking if um, upping the adrenaline another way, like doing physical activity instead of doing something psychological could be effective for them as well. So, uh, you know, my gut reaction is yes, certainly. Ideally, it's, it's if you can get it connected somehow in your mind to what it is you're trying to do. You know, so yeah, if every time you work on that project, you have a dance party or you do 25 jumping jacks and your brain um, you know, connects the two activities, then yes, I think that could be very impactful. Um, but, um, but you try to link it if you can. So you do, do the same thing at the beginning, um, would be how I would, I would recommend that. Any other questions? Let me see what my next slide is. Ooh, I just opened something else. All right. Do you see creative problem solving here? Okay. So, you know, a lot of us, you, you know, I'm not going to pretend that y'all haven't heard the word mindfulness a million times and you don't know what it means. Okay. So I'm not going to um, go into that because you already know, we've talked about it for decades now, I feel like. Um, but the, the bottom line is that I want to share with you two very simple mindfulness practi practices that you can utilize. Um, in the afternoon, because very often we have a slump of um, of physical energy and mental capacity that happens in the afternoon, in the late afternoon for many of us, right? And sometimes it's because we're dehydrated, we haven't drank enough water, maybe we didn't eat enough, maybe we just ate way too much, you know? Maybe we uh, didn't sleep well last night and that's catching up with us. So it could be a, a bunch of reasons. But often it's just because you've been going at a very fast paced speed all day and your body cannot uh, endure that without a reset. So how can you implement a quick mindfulness reset in the afternoon, especially when, you know, if you have kids at home or, or you have work meetings that go late into the night and you really need to be at top capacity and you're like, oh my gosh, I have five more hours today, six more hours in this day. Like, 
how am I going to do this? You know, and then it almost depletes your energy even more so, right? Because you're like, oh my God, I already did nine hours today. How am I going to do another five? So, um, so two things you can do in the afternoon um, and they include grounding and mindfulness. So one that I like to recommend is a shower, a mindfulness shower. And what I like about this is literally hopping in the shower, leaving your cell phone out of the shower um, and taking some moments in the shower to notice what is the, what's the tiniest droplet of water that you see falling down the edge of the wall. What's the subtlest sound that you can detect? Not the water, but what's even, what's below that? What's behind that? What can you hear? What's the scent? What's the, okay, well, I smell the shampoo, but what else can I smell? What, what use all your senses to hone in on what's the slightest, tiniest sound or feeling or scent that you can detect. And what that does is really super hone you into the present moment, which is what makes mindfulness so impactful, right? Because you're not, you're not, regenerating in your mind what happened in the past. You're not perseverating about anxiety and, and worrying about the future. You're super in the present moment and it allows your brain to calm in a way that um, that is very impactful for your body, mind and soul, right? So taking a, a shower in the mid afternoon to, and what I often find is that, man, the ideas that pop into my head <laughs> during that shower, you know, like, holy mackerel, oh, I, I never called this person back, or oh, wow, wouldn't these be a, a, a cool bonus to add on to this program? Like stuff pops into my head that never would have if I was sitting at my desk, right? So I love a shower mindfulness practice in the late afternoon during that typical time that you would be slumping in your energy or your mental capacity. And then on that same note, so you can do one of two things, or you could do both, um, is a silly mindfulness practice. And what is silly, and I already call it a playtime snack, not a physical snack, but like snack by meaning like a bite-sized period of time where you're gonna get really playful. You're gonna do something silly and it's gonna be physical. So this could be rolling around on the floor with your dog, right? This could be um, grabbing a hula hoop or roller skates or some, some physical activity that you don't do regularly. So this is not going for a jog. This is something out of the norm that's a little awkward and uncomfortable or weird or feels funny. So maybe you don't really jump in the trampoline with your kids or you don't typically have a dance party, you know, by yourself. But, um, but you do this to tap into it, the more kind of playful, youthful side of yourself, um, which can also be very clearing and um, rejuvenating, right? On an emotional level for you. Does anybody do anything like this already? Yes, I usually go for a walk, uh, you know, even if it's just around the block, you know, just to distract, I mean, to get some, some new uh, visual stimulation that's different from the area that I'm working on. Yeah, I love it. And that gets you out to nature. So you're grounding yourself in so many ways, um, either with water, or you walk barefoot. I also would recommend like, see maybe if you're brave enough to start like a, a playful, like as you're walking, maybe do some, you know, do some, do some silly, do some silly dances or skip a little bit and, and see what comes in. And because if anything, it gets a lightness out of you, like a humor, to have humor with yourself, to be light and more joyful and not take yourself so seriously. Um, and sometimes, you know, when you have, a, you know, um, kids or elderly people or um, animals around you, it's easier to tap into that. But if you're by yourself, it's harder. It, it just doesn't come as easily to get into those silly silly moments that you wouldn't otherwise normally do. So um, so maybe see if you can, uh, let's see, I walk the dogs, look for things to be grateful for, great. I do the same thing. If I can't make it down for my morning routine, I know one thing I guarantee I will have if I'm here, and that is my Great Dane's face right in my face the whole time. Take me out, take me out, take me out. So if I know I'm not gonna go to the gym, I'll walk around the block. That's a good reset right there. Sometimes I'll do that right before my team management call where I get on with Leanne and Derek and Greg and I'll just go take, and you know what? I'm taking care of her, so she's happy. I'm also giving myself a reset. So nice. Just a, block, just a block or two. I love it, beautiful. See if you can add something silly to it 
Maybe we roll around on the doing oh, something. They're always silly anyway. Okay. <laughs> I'm rapping. I'm rapping things that don't make sense. I'm rapping about the street signs and how they correlate with my okay. feelings. I get silly. No worries there. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, I love it. I love it. That's fabulous. Okay, so let's see. Oh, we're already how are we doing on time? Should I should I jump ahead a little bit, Damien? Well, we've got, we'll, we'll close up in 30 minutes. I want to have okay. a little time for the lightning round and any questions, but we're still Perfect. rolling. Okay, good. All right. So I wanted to talk about a couple things. And when I, in my my more in-depth programs, I have a you know whole session that we go into with communication. We talk about apologies and we talk about um, expectations and we talk about communicating your needs more effectively because so many of us really expect other people to understand what we need and then step up and do it. And so many of these people in our lives who care about us really would step up and do it. They just don't even understand what you need. And so, because you maybe haven't been super clear or you maybe haven't said it out loud, even though you think you've said it out loud. So um, so one of the tools I wanted to share with you today is very simple and it talks about assumptive listening, which is very typical that you've heard a million times where people just kind of wait till you finish. Yeah, 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 I know what you're gonna say, I know what you're gonna say. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just waiting for the person to finish so you can jump in with your two cents, with your advice, with your response, with your opinion, right? Because we already know, we're no, 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 no. So instead of that, um, both in your personal relationships and in your work relationships, man, you can make, you can make such a big difference in your relationships and in your work by taking a moment to reflect and check and then respond. And the cool thing about it is that so few people really, really do this. They know, oh yeah, 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 you're supposed to do this. But so few people really do it in practice that if you're the one person <laughs> who does this, it makes So for instance, I have a friend who taught me a long time ago where I called her, you know, and I was wanted to share something with her that was an issue or a problem I was dealing with. And she said, well, I really want to make sure I'm useful here to you. So help me understand. Are you looking for advice? Are you looking for feedback? Do you want my opinion? Or are you just really feeling like do you just need to vent this out in a safe spot and you're not ready for any um, outside opinions or advice quite yet? Nobody had ever said that to me before. And I was like, first of all, you're a genius. And second of all, huh, let me think about it. Actually, no, I'm, I don't think I'm ready to hear any advice on this. I just need, I just need to, I just need to say it out loud. I just need to share what, what happened. And then maybe later I'll be, you know, I'll be ready to hear something in return. She was like, okay, great. Hit me. So from that, I learned, holy moly, like what a, what a genius gift to be able to. So now not only do I ask that of people when they share something with me hey just so i know are you looking are you just looking for a safe place to get this off your chest which is awesome i'm here for you are you looking for advice or input would you like my opinion you know you tell them at the get-go with no judgment you know whatever you need i'm here for you but let me know what it is you're seeking often the person hasn't even realized what they're what they want from it so it gives them the opportunity to say yeah, actually, I really would love your advice. You've dealt with stuff like this before, and I really respect your opinion. Okay, great. Shoot me with it. So, um, so being very clear um, on that is is so powerful, and it's such a gift because not many people do it. So you want to make sure to avoid a subdiv listening by reflecting back what you heard. Okay, so what I hear heard you say. So if it's in a work situation and somebody says, "Hey, um, I'm I'm not going to get the the." document ready for you you know for monday's meeting i'm not gonna be able to get it to you on friday um and you're like oh man i really you're thinking inside really wanted to have a chance to go through it and edit it because monday morning i'm slammed right up until this meeting there's no way i'm gonna have a chance to look at it and like so you're stressing out you're thinking oh man they totally dropped the ball they put me in a should i cancel the meeting you're just having this whole internal dialogue right so instead reflect back, hey, so you're saying you're not going to be done with the presentation like at all. There's not anything I can review. Is that is that what you're saying? So that's the checking part. Is that correct? <laughs> you know, you're not assuming you're reflecting and then checking by saying, am I getting that right? Is that is that correct? Like, am I hearing you right? And they say, oh, no, no, no. Maybe she says, 
you know, I actually, I have all the copy done. I just wanted to add images to it. And I wanted, I don't like the images I found. Um, but yeah, the copy's done, just the images aren't done. And you can say, oh, okay, great. I don't care about the images. I, I just want to review the copy over the weekend because I'm not going to have a chance on Monday morning. So then, man, you've just communicated so much more effectively and both people are getting what they need because you didn't have any assumptive listening, you know, and then you didn't part ways completely missing each other's point. So, um, so I think it's a powerful tool that seems simple and everybody knows we should do it and it will help our communication. But very, very often we don't because we're, because of basic human nature, you know, we're communicative creatures and because we know people well, or we've known them for a long time, or we see their body language, or we've had past experiences that are similar. And so we very naturally apply that by assuming we know what they're thinking, or we know what's coming next, or we know why they're doing what they're doing, or we know why they're saying what they're saying. And it's just frankly, not always true. And so by taking just a brief moment to reflect back and then check in, hey, is that right? Did I get that right? and giving them a chance to correct you or say, yeah, that's exactly right. Okay, then respond. You will save yourself boatloads, boatloads of trouble. Yeah, asking first. All right. Anybody have any questions there? That, that is a good one. I mean, I, I, I yeah. find myself doing that sometimes and I, I try to catch myself doing that where, you know, you're having a conversation with someone and you already know you think what they're going to be saying you really want to just speed up the conversation and it's like sometimes it's just for me and my wife like when she's explaining something and i then assume what she's about to say and then of course i'll try to cut her off and just say it so i can move on that's offensive um and so no let's just reflect and check respond i love this great tool and it's so hard because like what you said about pacing i mean there's some people that are just quick thinkers and they're quick speakers and to slow down, like have you, I mean, you probably had this experience, Damien, where you talk to somebody and they speak so slowly that it's almost painful for you to slow down. And I want to be like, oh my God, if you talk any slower, I'm going to explode. The way I handle it is not to do this in front of them, obviously, because they'd be like, what are you doing? In my mind though, I'm literally doing this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Just trying to get myself through it by counting in my head. Now I know this. Listen, if I've been on a one one-on-one -on -one with you, I'm not telling you I do this to you. This is usually when it's not an important conversation, okay? When it's when it's just shooting shit. <laughs> but it's a way of being respectful if you work right. at a different pace, and it and it's just that everybody has different. Um, different speeds right that they function best at and i i always am like super impressed with people that really take their time to think through their words but man am i not accustomed to it and it's very uncomfortable and i i had a, a friends that were a couple and we were all on some big trip together and the husband was very very slow like this he has since passed away which is super sad but he um he was telling me a story and she was sitting there as well. And I thought he was done with the story. And I'm like moved on <laughs> to another conversation. And his wife like elbowed me and she was like, he's not done. He's not done talking yet. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Continue. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Uh <laughs> oh, I felt terrible. Okay. So yeah. Um, so I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about anxiety styles. Um, and this was something I wanted to add on. And I don't know if I even shared this with you, Damien, but you know, my, my first book is called Stretch Marks. Um, but my second book that I'm working on now um, that will be out in probably March maybe of 2023 um, is called The Anxiety Antidote. And it's all about um, kind of like, you know, the five love languages serves as a framework for understanding, oh, this is how I like to receive love and this is how my partner likes to receive love and so if we're speaking different languages then we're kind of disconnecting we're, we're just not connecting our feelings together um so it's it's like that in that it's a framework of understanding how you perceive anxiety how you perceive situations that might be traumatic or challenging 
and how that might affect you differently from somebody else. And when we understand our anxiety style, like what are your triggers? What are your cues? What are your common cycles? And what are your super strengths that align with that particular anxiety style? Then holy moly, you, um, you have this capacity then, this increased capacity to understand and have more compassion for those around you who are reacting totally differently to the same type of um, you know, environmental issue or challenge in the environment or um, you know, challenge at work. And you're like, why is, why is this person reacting this way? I don't get it at all. Why are they not more concerned? Or why are they so concerned? I don't get it. So it increases um, it increases your ability to be compassionate for yourself and be compassionate for someone else. And then I talk about, so I'm going to share with you the, the quiz here. Um, and then, so you can find out your own anxiety style, but then when you do, you can say, oh, because there's areas, first of all, there's a reason you all develop your particular style, right? There's like, there's a reason you develop it because it served you in some major capacity. But chances are there's components of that anxiety style that are showing up in your life right now that maybe are not serving you. And so how do you identify where it's serving you and really like acknowledge and celebrate that? And then how do you identify where it's not serving you anymore? And what do you do instead? How do you replace those? How do you add strategies to your life to minimize the anxiety in those areas where it's, it's really not serving you to have that particular um, perspective anymore? Does that make sense? So I would love to share with you guys. I'm going to put it in the chat. Uh, where did the chat go? Oh, here it is. Yeah, that's the anxiety antidote quiz there. And then, uh, and then, uh, and then also I can share with you if you're interested because you, you put in your email address when you take the quiz. And then, um, and then I'm going to be, uh, I was going to say leaking more information about the book as we go. So that if people want to be involved in like kind of the little focus groups and giving me feedback as I finish writing the manuscript, um, that'd be really fun. And I'm, I'm, I think I'm about ready to open it up to Q and a here. All right. All right. Well, this has been powerful. I mean, it, Leanne, I, Practical stuff, right? Like every slide, like is practical. Like I can go use that right now. This is killer, killer content, Amber. So let's um, get some uh, okay. questions from anybody out there that wants to go deeper on anything you've heard today or any questions that are around Amber's topic today. I have a question. Um, you know, in, in, in regards to the reflect, check and respond, I know I, I come into uh, business owners that are just, you know, uh, maybe their business is not doing well. They're just, as you're presenting, you know, you're pitching your business and they're just go down the list of why things are not working. It seems like, you know, and now with the, with the, the war with the Ukraine and like the gas, and now they're throwing everything in there. You're um, supposed to solve all, and you're trying to pitch your Yes, and, and like say, I mean, I don't know if that, if maybe they're using that as a strategy, but That's what's true. one way to really, and you want to listen to them because, you know, like you said, and then reflect uh, on on what, but it's more so you want to do it on their, about their business, not about the, the situation or their personal situation. What what would you recommend uh, and, you know, to do in, in that case, I mean, based on what you recommended? Yeah, so that brings me to like, I, I have a, an article that I wrote about um, inappropriate questions that family members ask around the holidays sometimes. And it reminds me of that because it kind of depends on your first gut um, guess at why they're saying it. Are they really just, they're so distracted because they just read something about the Ukraine and they can't get it off their mind and they're just, you're the one standing there and so that's who's gonna hear about it. Like, is it is that the reason that they're bringing it up? And if so, then you're going to react one way. So if they're going to if that's the reason that you might want to say, oh, my gosh, you know, yeah, it's, it's really challenging. And, you know, I, 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 you know, you want to show them that you understand what they're saying. So you're going to like reflect back something empathetic. Yeah, I could see that's really bothering you. I get it. 
you know? And then you want to quickly turn it. Like, I, I wish I had all the answers for you for that. Unfortunately, the only answers I have for you are about this. Like, if this is not a good time to go into them, I totally get it. But, you know, and then you give them the choice. It's back to them. Hey, do you want to talk about the Ukraine, really? Or because I'm not going to I'm not going to solve anything about the Ukraine for you. So if you you know, but if you want to talk about this, I'm that's why I'm, I, why I'm here and I'd love to try to help you. So, I mean, you don't say that last part out loud, but you know what I mean? Like you give you're giving them that option. Um, I, I would be really surprised if it's some sort of weird like negotiating tactic to throw you off. Um, but man, I mean, I guess you don't, you, I, you, some people are <laughs> in the sales environment. I, I've yeah. got a lot of experience selling yeah, to the small business owner with uh, credit card processing terminals. So I'm just reflecting off my history and yeah. I will tell you, it will blow your mind. The many varieties of smoke screens you will get oh, so no. as not to deal with the situation of making a decision right now. And yeah. that is just so common in sales. Sometimes it's a tool for them to totally try to distract you because I'm afraid of making a decision right now. I'm too afraid to just say no. And so, man, that war is really bugging me right now. So as an example, um, a lot of times in the sales environment that our digital agencies are in, you might, you, you need to do what Amber's suggesting. Let's identify, is it a smoke screen? or is it a legitimate concern? And I love your tools around it because you can't just pretend you didn't hear it and move on in your pitch. You've got to have heard it. You've got to address it. I totally understand how you feel. A lot of my clients are feeling the same way right now. And you know, once they got their revenues up by implementing my strategies, it's like they don't even think about that stuff anymore. Yeah, yeah you show them yeah, how you can reduce their anxiety about this other part of their business. Yeah, by providing your product. I also like, Joe, you know how you mentioned the 54321 um, and Damien, you mentioned about, you know, that people are, you know, so reluctant to make a decision and hesitating to make a decision. You know, you can kind of give them your own 54321, like, oh, you know, I, I know. And we don't know how long this drama, you know, is going to last in, um, in the Ukraine. Unfortunately, this, you know, offer that I've put together, my team has put together, is only available for another few days or whatever it is. You give them their own 54321. So like, I'm happy to provide, like answer any questions that you have um, in the meantime, um, but you know, this, you give them a deadline. I mean, and you're the better, you, you're in sales. So um, I'll let you take take on the detail from there, but maybe use, I loved your 54321. So maybe you can utilize that as well. Good stuff. Okay, thank you. All right, any, can we have time for maybe two more questions and then I'm gonna take her through the lightning round. Anybody have another question? Leanne, do you have another question? I, I have a behemoth of a question. Um, <laughs> so I, so I, I probably shouldn't ask it, but when you had your conversation with Damien originally, which I, you know, uh, luckily got to listen to, um, you talked about the your visualization method, the good yeah. And um, we probably don't have enough time for you to go into it, but I was wondering, what do you use visual visualization for specifically? Okay, I mean, I'm happy to, I love talking about my goodie methods, so I'm happy to do it. I'm gonna, hold on, I'm gonna, David reminded me of something. So I'm gonna copy my my personal um, calendar link in here. David, feel free to sh shoot me a, a, a calendar, or I just shot you my calendars. Feel free to hop on a time and I can share with you the resources that I have to answer your question. Um, also, if anybody, uh, well, we can talk about that later. Okay, um, visualization. So, um, what do you use it for? Yeah, why? What's the point? Like, is it just to bliss out and like imagine something beautiful on a beach for a few minutes every day? I mean, that has its benefits for sure. Um, but truly what, what visualization is, is it's a practice that you can do, that you can enact, that's meant to draw into your life more of what you want in the most simplest terms. It's a practice that you use to draw something that you want into your life. Now, most people will say, you know, we manifest things. So manifest is like the term for like, what happens like when it shows up, oh, I manifested this, right? Visualization is a practice that you use to manifest or draw things closer into your life, into your world, into reality. Um, and the truth is that m most people and researchers and writers on this topic will say you're manifesting all the time whether you know it or not but this is consciously doing it so this is consciously on purpose manifesting what you want more of into your life 
by using a practice and that practice is called visualization. Now, my practice, it, it actually maybe shouldn't be called visualization because that's just one of the six parts um, is the visual stuff. And actually it's only part of one of the parts. So I've studied visualization since um, reading Think and Grow Rich like 27 years ago and, um, and was super, um, very practical, very logical oriented and was like, hmm, I will test this, you know? And so I tested it and it like crazy things happen. And, you know, and so when you've done this so many times in your life and these just wild things come into fruition in your life, um, you know, it's really, it, it becomes kind of like, you know, my cell phone, like I, I couldn't build one of these. I couldn't really explain how it works that you can ask Siri what, oh God, I shouldn't say Siri. You can ask one question and um, get, you know, information at the in the millisecond about anything on the planet. Um, that's crazy, like that's magical, right? So I feel like visualization techniques are the same thing. Like I can't explain exactly how they work but I've experienced them enough, like this phone, I use it every day and it works. So I'm just grateful that I have it and that it works. Um, and I can use it even though I don't fully understand um, scientifically how it works. Does that make sense? So my goodie, I'll just go through it quickly. My Goody method starts with, uh, it's another acronym, it starts with G. And this is getting into a state of gratitude at the beginning of your practice. Um, because if you go into a visualization practice from a state of frustration, irritability, jealousy, envy, you know, hate, anger, um, scarcity, uh, it's just not going to serve the practice. You know, it's going to sabotage it essentially. So getting into gratitude um, strategy I like to use is getting small and specific um, because that will um, get you into the emotion of gratitude, which is what's really powerful, not just listing off. I'm grateful for my home and my car and the weather and uh, dinner I had tonight. And you're not even thinking about it, right? So getting really small and specific. Oh my gosh, I'm so grateful that I had like my favorite creamer um, in my coffee this morning and I got to like sit and drink it outside and watch the sunrise, like really get into the specifics. And that will elicit the feelings of gratitude. So that's the G. And um, then we have an O. Now, a lot of people on this call are probably people who do for others in their life more readily, more easily, and more often than you do for yourselves. So let's use that to your advantage right here, right now, right? So how will this visualization exercise, how will whatever you're visualizing benefit somebody who really is important to you? How will this benefit others in your life? So others is um, the second. So. Think of how will this, maybe it's just that you'll be happier. And so you'll come home and you'll take your dog on a longer walk, you know, because you have the energy and you have the emotional capacity. Maybe you will um, have more time in your day. So you will be able to spend more time with your family members or you'll be able to travel more. So how will it benefit the people, the community, the causes, the family members, the employees, um, the team, the other people in your life that you care about? really focus on how it's going to benefit them because often that's very motivating for us. Um, the second O is outcome. So Vishen Laikani of Mind Valley talks a lot about what's the final outcome. Often we are visualizing what is the means to the end, what we think will get us to being happy, not the final outcome of what you're really looking for. And that takes a bit to get to for most of us. As most of us, when you're visualizing something, it's a means to an end. It's not necessarily the final product. It's how we think we're gonna get there. So sometimes that takes a little while to really get clear in your mind, what is the final outcome that you're looking to achieve right now? So, um, and I have lots of fun examples of this, um, uh, but I'll go through the rest of them first. Details is the D, and that's where you wanna bring in all your senses, right? So while you're visualizing this scene of yourself on the beach in Hawaii, you are using not only what you see, your visual input. Okay, I see the waves, I see, I see the rocks over here, I see the sand, um, but what do you smell? Oh my gosh, I can smell 
the salty air. What do I feel on my face? I can feel the breeze. I can feel the sunlight. I can feel the warm, hot um, Hawaiian coffee, you know, in the mug. I can smell it. So you always, I always, in all my visualization practices, I bring in something that I'm eating or something that I'm drinking, right? So I'm sipping a glass of of tart champagne or I'm, you know, having a cup of hot coffee or what can you taste? Um, and then to to add to it, um, Emily Fletcher, who does Ziva meditation, she talks about um, something brilliant that's called um, not changing your order. So quick story, if you sit at a restaurant and you say, you know, yeah, can I have a, a ham and cheese omelet, please? And they go away. And then it's like 10 minutes later, you're like, you know what? I'm, I'm really not that hungry. I don't want that. Um, and you call back over the waiter. You say, you know what? I just, can I just get some, some toast and, uh, and a coffee? I'm so sorry. I, I don't really want the omelet. And then they say, no, no, no problem. No problem. They go back, cancel. They start making your toast. And then you call them over. You say, oh my gosh, this person, I didn't know. I didn't know you'd make that. Like, oh my gosh, you make chilaquiles? Like, I want chilaquiles. Like, can I have, oh, I guess I'm hungry after all. And then you order that. Meanwhile, 45 minutes later, you're like, I can't believe my food hasn't arrived. I've been here for 45 minutes. It's ridiculous, right? And you've changed your order five times. And so visualization works the same way. You need to be consistent because your order is coming. They start making it. It starts coming your direction. So if you change your order five times and then you get pissed that it didn't show up, is because you change your order five times. So I always, I love that example, right? It's so clear. So we've got the um, gratitude, others, outcome, details, all your senses. The I is inspired action. So this is when you're doing that afternoon shower or that afternoon walk, and you have that moment of inspiration. Oh my gosh, you know what? My old neighbor works for that same company that we were trying to call the other day. And I'm pretty sure they work in HR. I have their email address. Let me call them. Act on that inspired action that pops up. So that's the I. And then the E is emotions. So what you want to do is they say sit in the emotions. So say you're on the beach and you're smelling your coffee and you're feeling the wind and the breeze on your face and you're feeling the sun and you're hearing the sound of the waves. You've got all your senses in. What are the emotions that come up for you? What are the positive emotions? Is it excitement? Is it joy? Is it calm and relaxation? Is it pride? Is it, you know, what are the positive emotions that you link to that event as it's happening or as it comes to fruition and really sitting in those emotions, which means feeling those emotions um, for as long as possible every day makes the pull even more powerful. Thank you for the behemoth question, Leanne. Yeah, uh, I, I, quick follow up because it seems like inspired action is kind of stepped away from the moment where you're visualizing. It is, it is, but it it fit in the acronym, so I had to put it in the middle. But um, but yeah, it is. It's something that doesn't happen in the moment of the practice. It's hap It's something you have to pay attention to during the other twenty three hours and forty five minutes when you're not visualizing. Excellent. All right, lightning round. Oh goodness! You ready? I, for, I already, I already forgot what. <laughs> Best advice. I didn't care at that. all, so it's well, legit. Normally, normally our speakers aren't because you got the benefit of actually hearing this stuff, and that's one percent. <laughs> so, um, what is your best, the best advice you've ever received? Um. So. <laughs> so. Uh, the best is often like the most reluctantly, you know, the one I don't want to hear, um, which is um, which is slowing down, which is slowing down. And, and I had to give myself that um, advice. I had to realize it myself, which is the um, the slowing down to speed up, the slow down. And I am an achievement junkie, you know, so slowing down and being enough enough already. Um, and so that's, it's a constant, it's a constant challenge. That sounds like one I could definitely use. So that's some really, really good advice. Now, um, a book that you would recommend other than your own to this audience and why? Okay. I mean, well, I love, I love thinking grow rich. I mean, that's one of my favorite, favorite classics. When was the last um, time you read it? 
you know what? It's been a while. I w- I'm going to Palm Springs on Sunday, and I just saw it again on my shelf behind me, and I was like, I'm gonna bring it and read. It's and been re- at least 20 years. No, it's been. Uh, let's see. My oldest was like nine months. Uh, not my oldest, my so it's been about nine years. Okay, so I'll just tell you real quick what you're in for, and maybe a little bit different since you read it nine years ago. I read it as an early 20 year old, and then I read it as a mid 40 year old. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh lord, how different it is, right? Oh no. It's, like it's a really, it's 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 a different book completely, and um, so when I revisited it, I revisited it on Audible. And I actually had the physical book, so I was able to listen to it at two times speed because I was reading and listening at the same yeah. time. So, incredible material twenty years later. Right. I mean, it's it's interesting, but I, you know, I love the um, what is it, the Big Leap, the um, Gay Hendrix. I would probably recommend that to this group if you haven't read it already. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was one that I that's been around for a while, and I've been. I mean, I. I am obsessive. I read about a book a week. I love reading. Um, and they're mostly all, I probably read 90% nonfiction. They'll all go in in spurts and sometimes I'll, I'll read some some fiction. But even if it's fiction, it's normally memoir, which is not really fiction. <laughs> but um, I have one good friend who's a fiction writer. So I always read all her books um, and they're great, but they're uh, not biographies or anything. Cool. What was that uh, again? Derek, type it in for me or one of you, please. The Big Leap by Gay Hendrix. Yeah. Yeah. All so right. I recommend that one. Okay. I'm going to be quiet. Application or resource that, other than your own, that you would recommend a hack, a resource, a tool, a re- um, anything that you use that you feel the folks on our call can get major uh, level up with? A hack, okay, a resource. Or tool, resource. I can have the tool. Um, let me think. The Oponopono you mentioned the other day. What's up with that? that what, Ho- Ho'oponopono? Oh, Ho'oponopono, is that, is that a tool? So that's a meditation. It's a it's a mantra meditation. Yeah, it's good. Um, there's probably an app. They probably have an app. They have a marketing team like none other. And it's funny to me because it's the simplest thing. So it's... And you can do this with, with like a box breathing meditation. So you say, um, it's four, four simple phrases. You say, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And it's a great practice for when like you want to meditate, but your brain is like on fire and will not calm down. Um, and so sometimes I'll, I'll use that and you could just do to do 10 of those while you're breathing. Um, there is really that, that's a tool. That's a really good there tool. You go. All right. There you I, go. I was explained it a few years ago from one of my fellow Maverick members. Uh-huh. And I really grasped it. You really explained it really simple and to use the visual, you know, like again, you're, you're yeah. really good tool. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Well, it wasn't what, Steve Little, was it? It was Steve Little. Thank you very much. That's exactly <laughs> who it was. <laughs> That's incredible. You yeah. Know that. Yeah. Right. I'm, I, I, I know Melinda and uh, Steve was at one of her retreats and he mentioned Huoponopono and I had already been doing Huoponopono and I just sought him out and I, and we did like a Huoponopono meditation series um, at the beginning of COVID together. I called him. I said, hey. Will you will you lead a meditation practice um, for my community? And he did. All right, I might have to knock on that door as well. I was actually going to be reaching out to Melinda. She owns a podcast social um, app platform. It's yeah. called what is it called? Podopolo. Podopolo. I, I struggled with that uh, last week. I'm trying to remember yeah. the name of that. Yes. And uh, yeah, I'd like her to uh, potentially be one of our future guests. So thank oh, you for yeah. on that. Tonight, I'm actually, what I'm going to do right when we wrap up out of here, you probably know Steve Ulcher. He's in town, CEO of Podcast Ooh, Magazine. Cool. Yeah, I know of him. I don't know him personally. I sent him a message and I, I heard you're in town and my wife and I'd like to take you out to dinner. And you know what? Who doesn't want to be taken out to dinner, right? So that's tonight. But no, I got to reach out to Melinda because podcasting is all the rage right now, right? Are you doing a lot of podcasting? Sure. Um, so I do have to tell you, I, I invested in Podopolo. That her, the platform is... And, and they didn't ask me to. I was like, tell me, I'm like, tell me more about what you guys are doing. And then I was like, okay, so what, yeah, I, I wanted to get on board early because I, I was like, if they pull off what they are intending to pull off, holy mackerel, 
It'll yeah. teach you awesome. it'll everything. It's this phenomenal. Good, I will be reaching out because this is a good, good reminder. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and land this plane. It's been an amazing session. Um, I'd like you to, if you have any final words, please tell them how to follow you as well. We've got a couple links that we put in here, but please, any final words for the Go Mobile community? And, and you can't leave until they all give you a proper sign off, which we love to do as Okay, well. okay, perfect. Well, I, yeah, I wanna say thank you everybody for your time and your attention. Both are precious and I appreciate them both greatly. I hope that um, at least some of the tools I've used here and shared are useful to you. I always recommend you just pick one to begin with in case you have like five written down. Just choose one thing to start with tomorrow and add that. And once you incorporate that and becomes a habit, then you can add a second. Um, I do two things. I have a lot of um, uh, I have private clients that I work with for coaching for this type of, of content, communication, relationships, parenting, um, and stress and anxiety. Uh, reduction in stress, stress and anxiety, but I also work with corporate teams. So I have a three month in-depth program for any teams that are dealing with a lot of stress and anxiety right now. Um, and so if you have a team or you know of teams that would be interested, I can do like a, like a free masterclass workshop and then, you know, talk and see if that's something that might be a good fit for your team. That is really cool. Awesome. Well, thank you. And thank you for your time. Um, I'm, I'm super, super stoked that we got introduced to you. And I, I see a lot of future work together. Yeah. Um, I'm really, really excited. And man, keep, keep, keep those rock stars in line. You're gonna, they're gonna, before you know it, they're gonna, they're gonna release their tracks and then it's gonna be, woo. <laughs> they are talented. Now, are you, just a quick question. Are you uh, at all music? No. How did they all just get inspired by music? Neither is my husband, where neither one of us are musicians. Wow. It just... I mean, just, that's a whole nother episode. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I mean, right. we went on, they were, two of them were in a Broadway musical um, called the, the School of Rock, the old Jack Black movie that they turned into a musical. And we all went on tour for a year and a half with 150 other people across the US and Canada for to, to like 60 different cities. Um, and it was like, it was crazy. It was wow. really- Wow, roadie, you were the roadie for your kids. Yeah, and I wrote, I wrote my book while we were on the tour. That First is time. awesome. That is awesome. Well, Amber, thank you so much. It's been a powerful, energizing session, one that I will watch again. And uh, I'm going, I've got my notes and I'm gonna be looking into that super sense and sharing some of that with my wife. So I'm gonna recommend all of you as well, share some of this material with your spouse, your kids, your family. These are communication strategies that, you know, not only will help you enjoy your life much more, but keep you out of trouble too, for sure. <laughs> so thank you, Amber, I really appreciate it. All right, everybody, you know what we need to do now is take the mics off, unmute yourself, and let's send Amber out with one of the best sign-offs she's ever, ever had. Go ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amber. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amber. And blushing. Thank you, Amazing. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and, so and the biggest thanks you can all give to her is apply these things in your business and in your life. And with that, I love you guys. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you for you, your Dave. attention. I can't wait to see you next happy hour because it's coming up next Friday. Put it on your calendar. Make sure you're there. What we like to say now, bye Leanne, bye Derek, bye Favor, bye team, bye all my family. Go mobile or go, go mobile. home. Go home. Oh, oh, take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you.